there's something rotten in the state of Iowa. Republicans have seemingly targeted Auditor Rob Sand after a series of reports that bring corruption in the Hawkeye state to the fore. Last year, The Atlantic published a glowing article titled The Most Dangerous Democrat in Iowa, accusing Republicans of attempting to, quote, defang the last remaining Democrat in office in Iowa. The Atlantic highlighted a bill passed last March limiting the auditor's access to information. This comes after a series of audits seemingly revealing fraud to the tune of tens of thousands of dollars in for a local county health department. Additionally, Sand uncovered that an Iowa Board of Parole member was not attending certain hearings required by state law. To Sand, this is a sign of corruption festering in Iowa. Take a look. Government corruption and secrecy are growing in the state of Iowa. Government corruption and secrecy will grow further if SF 2311 passes this year. It is no coincidence that yesterday, the same day that Republican insiders that authored last year's pro-corruption bill advanced a new bill, again, despite bipartisan opposition, to further destroy anti-corruption checks and balances. It would replace the state auditor chosen by the people of the state of Iowa with one insiders will handpick with no bidding requirement and no means for independent oversight of their audits. These insiders want a state auditor who is a lap dog, not a watchdog. Here to join us and discuss is Iowa State Auditor, the man, the myth, the legend, Rob Sand. Welcome to Rising. How are you, Jessica? I'm doing well. I'm very happy to have you on. Can you walk us through, for our viewers who might not be familiar, with some of the most recent exposés of corruption across Iowa, thanks to your work? Yeah, and this really goes back all the way through my first term when we uncovered a record amount of misspent money. I never imagined that the reaction to uncovering a record amount of misspent money doing the job as well as it had ever been done would be to literally ratchet down on our ability to find misspent money. That to me is the craziest piece about this. We have gone after local entities, we have gone after state government, we have gone after Democrats and Republicans. And the simple truth is that right now, you know, in any state government, especially one controlled by one party, you've got a small number of insiders that are truly in control of things and they don't like it. They don't want accountability. And so what they're going to now, after last year, having taken away our ability to access certain documents, going to remove us all together from auditing the state. The state auditor who's elected by the people of the state of Iowa will no longer audit the state. I don't get it. And it looks like, Rob, one of the, the first things you uncovered was that the Iowa government, government, particularly Governor Kim Reynolds, had apparently tried to use COVID funds to pay for an update to the state's network, um, that is their computer network. And it turns out that the contract that they signed before, uh, the, the contract that they signed to update the network was signed before um, the pandemic actually started and those COVID relief funds were released. Can you walk us a little bit through um, that uh, scenario and what exactly happened and how the governor has responded to your work? Absolutely. That was the single biggest item, $20 million just right there, uh, where they tried to use CARES Act funds where it was never even remotely going to qualify. Jessica, the most interesting piece of that is that they actually went to the legislature before the pandemic and asked for funds to switch to Workday. Now, of course, the governor's former chief of staff works for Workday. The legislature said no, and then when the pandemic came along, they just decided to use those CARES Act funds anyway, even though the legislature said that they weren't interested in funding the program. Now, I want to get into the fact that Rob Sand is extremely popular in Iowa. Rob, you're popular among Republicans and Democrats, and it seems to be the case across the country that Americans are just sick of corruption in government. Now, this effort to remove the state auditor from the ability to audit the state or you know, eliminate your role entirely, it, it seems to be an unpopular political move by those attempting to execute it. Is your sense that they just don't care? And is your sense that this would be an unpopular move and that people in Iowa really do, as I've seen, I've lived there, uh, really value your work? You know, I, I, I can tell you that I had an astronomical number of people come up to me at the state fair last year and say something to the effect of, I'm not a Democrat, but if they're going after you, you must be doing your job. 
And I, I think that to me, the people who are pushing this bill, they don't care about accountability and they don't want accountability. They recognize and they exploit the fact that voters truly are stuck in a system where they only have two realistic choices. They think that they have enough people effectively captured that they're not going to vote for the other side. And so they, they think that they can be corrupt and then they can destroy checks and balances and that there won't be accountability for them. Governor Reynolds has tried to defend this piece of legislation that would take some of the power away from your office, the auditor's office. And she says that the Iowans, ex that Iowans expect the executive branch to work things out when there are disagreements, saying to go to the courts to have executive branch agencies competing against each other, taxpayers have to pay for it twice. And I just don't think it's unreasonable that we can come to some resolution through the arbitration process. Um, what do you make of her comments about um, that fundamental tension between you guys and, and her attempts to outsource the auditing to independent outside agencies? Yeah, I'm actually glad that you brought that up because that was another piece of last year's law that we hadn't even talked about yet. So the biggest piece was they made this long list of documents that the state auditor can't look at, which Jessica, I'm pretty sure you, me, anyone else who's ever getting audited would love to be able to say, yeah, you can look at these documents, but not these ones over here. The crazier piece is if we have a dispute over what documents we think that we can look at, the governor's bill last year set up a dispute resolution mechanism that's a three-person panel. They took away our ability to go to independent judges, and instead they created a three-person panel with one person from the state agency that we're auditing. Nine times out of 10, that is gonna be someone who works under the governor. One person from our office, and a third person appointed by the governor. So sure, she doesn't think that it's unreasonable that we should go through this arbitration process to resolve the dispute. I think everybody can understand how that resolution process is going to uh, finish its decision. Yeah, that's absolutely maddening. Has your sense of what Republicans feel in the state towards you just been that, that they don't want to be audited, they don't want to be held accountable, that there's corruption going on and that's really all it is? Or do you think what they're really up to is, you know, trying to get a Republican auditor that's more friendly to the things they want to spend money on? Do you really feel like it's just they don't want to be held accountable for the corruption in the state or that there's something more going on here? You know, one thing I want to emphasize is there has been bipartisan opposition to both last year's bill and this year's bill. There were six Republicans in the Iowa House last year who said, heck no, this is a terrible idea. So far, this bill has passed the Senate. Uh, there was in committee a Republican who voted against it who was absent for the floor vote. But we have bipartisan opposition in both situations. That, to me, emphasizes that we still have people in uh, both parties who recognize that checks and balances are good and that government waste is bad. So I do think it really comes down to a small number of insiders who just look at the situation and they don't want someone to question them. They are, um, they are into the power that they have been given. They don't want someone to counter the power that they have been given. And they don't care that the voters elected someone from the opposite party to help be a part of those checks and balances. I mean, this bill that they're running this year would literally take the voters decision and kind of pat the voters on the head and say, oh, it's nice that you wanted to elect Sand to audit the state. We're just going to pick who we want instead. All right, Rob Sand, thank you so much for joining us on Rising today. We'll be back with more after this.